Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. The Wednesday, December 27 General Hospital Spoilers teaser teases that Christina Corintos Davis and Molly Lansing Davis were called in by Alexis Davis to discuss the surrogacy, which was tricky because Christina was the egg donor. Molly and Christina's commitment to one another was not the same as a binding contract, as Alexis made clear. Signing a contract wasn't enough because the child parent security statute was new and open to challenge. Additionally, genetic surrogacy agreements were unenforceable in the state of New York. Nonetheless, Christina claimed she could simply become pregnant in another state. Alexis continued to worry about all the gaps and wanted to ensure that her girl's welfare was taken care of. Christina questioned whether Alexis was genuinely only attempting to keep Molly safe from her. Alexis didn't appear to think Christina would follow the terms of the deal. Although Alexis said it was untrue, she offered adoption as a workaround to make sure everything would be resolved legally. Alexis brought up the fact that Molly had previously looked into it and wanted to go over all the specifics. Molly stated she would look into it. Christina intervened, saying Molly, not Alexis, was the attorney in this case. Even though Christina later expressed regret for undervaluing her mother's legal knowledge, Alexis pledged to back off after realizing she was going too far. Molly described this journey as one of faith and hope. Nothing could ever make them forget they were sisters, according to Christina, who concurred that their sisterhood was stronger than legalities. Gregory Chase was receiving fluids in an exam room at GH when Hamilton Finn discovered him there. He discovered that Chase had overheated during hot yoga. Finn talked with the class instructor and discovered that Gregory had truly collapsed when Gregory's physician was examining him. Gregory grudgingly consented to stay overnight for observation at the request of his doctor, but he made it plain that he would be leaving in a day because he had plans for New Year's Eve. Brooke Lynn Quartermain was late for a leadership meeting at Deception at Home, but she made time to chat with Josh Swickard's character Harrison Chase about getting married. Chase opposed because he wanted to do this right and for keeps this time, especially because Brooke Lynn appeared ready to speed the nuptials forward quickly. Gregory's Christmas wish was for them to get married soon, and Brooke Lynn said that Chase was wondering what was wrong with her. When Chase finally received a call from Finn providing information on Gregory's fall, he hurried to the hospital. Finn brought up his concern that Gregory would pass out after pointing out that Gregory insisted he had just overdone it. Chase proposed that perhaps they ought to have trust and accept Gregory's reasoning. Chase thought it couldn't hurt to be a little optimistic. Chase brought up Gregory dancing at the spring wedding after the doctor informed Finn and Chase that Gregory would be kept overnight for monitoring. Gregory was happy that the wedding was happening so quickly, but Chase gave off the impression that he was eager to wed Brooklyn. Maxie Jones attempted, but failed badly, to act as referee for Tracy Quartermain and Lucy Coe at Deception. Lucy launched into a diatribe, saying that Laura Collins was Luke Spencer's genuine love and that Tracy had nothing else to live for after Luke's death. Although Tracy retaliated with a few barbs of her own, Lucy's were much worse because it seemed like Tracy's family hardly liked her at all. Lucy believed that Tracy would pass away unwanted and unlovable. When Brooklyn came, she overheard some of Lucy's remarks and advised Lucy not to speak to her grandmother in that manner. Following Brooklyn's defense of Tracy's connection with Luke, she angrily declared that her family loved her and that Lucy would never get it. After Brooke Lynn disparaged Lucy's history with males, Lucy stormed out, insisting the discussion go on without her. Brooke Lynn insisted that everything she said was meant, and Tracy was appreciative of that. Felicia Scorpio discussed her suspicion that Cody Bell had lied about the DNA test with Robert Scorpio while they were at Kelly's. Felicia also discussed with Scott Baldwin, who had just arrived, Cody's decision to dismiss the case over the destroyed Leopold Taub necklace. Felicia was now much more certain that Cody was the son of Max Scorpio, John J. York, 
But Robert wasn't fond of Cody and questioned whether Mac truly needed to know. Robert believed that it would be challenging to substantiate Felicia's Felicia claim that Mac had adamant on finding the truth, even though she didn't think it would be all that difficult for her. Lucy joined Scott again and suggested a strategy that would make them wealthy by 2024. Lucy declared that after Scott married Tracy, they would seize all she owned. Sasha Gilmore discovered Cody at the Quartermain stables and forewarned him that Felicia was sincerely dubious about the DNA findings, particularly because Cody had never given her the printout. Sasha believed that Cody ought to confess before being exposed, but he was deposed prior to the lawsuit being dismissed, thus Cody was unable to do so. Cody may face jail time if he came clean now because he had to sign an affidavit claiming to be Leo's son. Sasha hinted that Cody had come a long way in the last few months and believed he could stay out of jail, but Cody was determined to keep Mac's name intact. Sasha promised to be there for Cody if he ever made the decision to come clean. Sasha swore she would never reveal the information. Naturally, Sasha brought up the possibility that Cody's secret would still come to light given Felicia's tenacity in searching for information. According to General Hospital teasers, viewers saw a new face in the episode that aired on December 27 as Maxie Jones. Nickel Paggy substituted Kirsten Storms in the scenes at the deception office while she was away from the role of Maxie. Naturally, this is not an endless recast scenario. Watchers will soon get to see the real Maxi because Kirsten Storms is already back in the episode teaser for December 28. That being said, given the show's filming timeline and the possibility that Storms required additional days off, Paggy might feature in additional episodes. In any event, since the show must go on, it's nice that GH can devise temporary recasts as needed. Without a doubt, it's simpler to introduce a new actor quickly and keep the action moving than it is to introduce unanticipated delays. Regarding Nicole Paggy, she appeared in sequences alongside Amanda Seton, Jane Elliott, and Lynn Herring. When the hostilities increased, Maxie tried her hardest to mediate a settlement, but she was eventually unable to put an end to the violence. At times, Brooke Lynn, Tracy, and Lucy can cause more difficulty than Maxie's own children. Paggy's roles on Pasadena, Hope and Faith, 90,210, Rizzoli and Isles, 9 to 11, and The Rookie. Feds may be familiar to you. Paggy will also appear in a forthcoming episode of The Sterling Affairs, a miniseries. There will be questioning when Kirsten Storms takes up the role of Maxie on December 28. Maxie is going to question Sasha Gilmore about her relationship with Cody Bell and whether or not their dynamics are changing. Although Sasha will find it difficult to keep Cody's DNA a secret, she will stop at nothing to honor her word and prevent Maxie from learning the truth. If Nickel Paddy decides to step in for a while in any upcoming episodes, we'll make sure to keep you informed. For the time being, we may anticipate Kristen Storms taking back her position before the week is up. Spoilers for General Hospital claim don't miss all the news that's brewing about Maxie's future. She has some surprises in store. Numerous daytime celebrities like Michael Easton honored their departed colleague. Michael Easton, who portrays Finn on General Hospital, is among numerous daytime celebrities honoring their deceased friend and co-worker Kamar de los Rios. After a brief illness, the 56-year-old actor who portrayed Antonio Vega in Ola Teal passed away on Christmas Eve. Cam R. Easton wrote in the opening of his Facebook post, I never wanted to write these words for you. I never imagined that I would need to. You exceeded the limits of existence, a natural power that raised us, and having you here made the world feel even more surreal. You had a fighting spirit. You battled to your final breath a man of unwavering faith and hope. Your children's affection for you and your wife's love for you were the lifeblood that kept you going. To many, you meant a great deal. You toured with the USO and promoted charities, remarks Easton, who co-starred with De Los Rios in Ola Teal as law enforcement officer John McBain. The excellent work you performed for Puerto Rico following Hurricane Maria. 
You're well known to millions of people thanks to video games, movies, and television. You are simply my best friend, my wedding's best guy. You were always there for 30 years, enjoying life to the fullest that I have ever known. And I tried to love life as much as you did when I was with you. Even though the nights seem suddenly darker, I know you are still with us, your light guiding us forward, Easton continued. We are all broken now, but blessed to have shared this time. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any updates.